Howdy, it's Tubal Kane again, and this is episode number 19 of my This and That series, and I have a lot to cover. But let's start with uh, this uh, little shaper here that I showed in the video entitled Antique Model Metal Shaper Blah Blah Blah. Take a look at that. That's in two parts. If you've never seen it, 88,000 people have watched that. But the interesting thing is that I did sell this thing about three years ago to a man, and I think... Uh, He's in Nebraska, but anyway, it's out west compared to where I'm at. I'm at, but he has totally restored it and has done. His name is Dave. He has done several uh, videos on this, and uh, look under small metalworking machine, or simply uh, search for GK Shaper Part One Testing and Assembly. You will be most impressed and will enjoy it. And you sure did a nice job, Dave. Now let's go out to my garage real quickly where I want to show you something on that South Bend lathe. Then we'll get back down here. I'm out in the garage now and a couple improvements yet to this South Bend lathe. And remember I had a, a two video series on making this guard, this belt guard for the South Bend lathe. And the improvements are that, first of all, remember I had uh, a magnet here, and it would rattle a little bit. So I took the magnet off, and I've got a screw that goes through there and a, a little uh, knob to tighten it so it's, it's firm now. And this isn't something I'll open th that often anyway, but there was much uh, to do or criticism or suggestions about how to cover this hole. And remember some of the answers I, I was considering was the cupcake uh, deal. This is off of a fence post from Menards. This is uh, the spoon that could be used on there. And someone suggested uh, freeze plugs, core plugs, and they come in different sizes. That's way too small, but I probably could get one the right size. And someone also suggested using the, the hubcaps that come on trailer wheels and available in stores. But of all things, a man by the name of Ty Powell out of Lockport, Illinois, and that's not too far from here, and it's right on the Illinois-Michigan Canal, and I have bicycled along there from time to time, time to time, and there's a lock there, and that's, uh, of course, its namesake on the canal, but that's also not too far from the, uh, the big house in Joliet. But I digress there just a little bit, but of all things Ty said, I'm going to send you something that I think would be most appropriate to cover that. And here it is. It just came in the mail a few minutes ago, and it says South Bend on it, but actually it's not for a South Bend lathe. This what came off of a child's buggy, an antique buggy. This was a hubcap, and it was attached onto the spokes. There would have been wire spokes. So thank you ever so much, Ty. That is so awesome. And now i got to think of a way to fasten it on there. It's too thin to weld. Let me think a minute. I'm not at all in the mood for taking this cover off again, so I thought I'd use a, a big washer of some kind and fasten the, uh, the hubcap onto that. And of all things, I ran into, uh, in my uh, junk drawer, this is a cast iron ring. And I already bored this just a little bit larger. And then I made uh, four slots or notches and I drilled some holes. So let's take a look at that. So that's how that looks. And you can see I'm going to bend the tabs over and then it will be on there pretty solid. That will prevent it from uh, fitting real flush. but. I don't know if I should paint that gray before I do it. Then I'll center that and drill two eighth inch holes and use pop rivets. Yeah, I think I will take the time to paint that, but then I have to wait for the paint to dry. But I'll, I'll see you as soon as the paint dries. Second and last rivet. And there it is. Now why that paint doesn't quite match, I don't know, but a South Bend hubcap on a South Bend lathe. Hope you liked that. And thank you to uh, Ty who sent that to me. So this job is finally done, but this is how this works now. There's a threaded hole in there.
All right, I'm back down in the basement. I hope you like the South Bend deal. Now, recently I got a package out of the clear blue sky, and it came from Bushnell, Illinois, courtesy of Craig Heath, who is one of my viewers. And uh, he, in conjunction with uh, Dan Chambers at the Vaughn Hammer Company, which is there in Bushnell, Illinois, made up this beautiful 16-ounce Vaughn Ball Peen Hammer for me, specially engraved with my name. Isn't that a beauty? Thank you so much to uh, both of you, both uh, Craig Heath and Dan Chambers. I've been using the Vaughn hammers for many years. I had a lot of them at school and I have quite a few of them here in my basement and this is way too pretty to use. Craig Heath does not work for the Vaughn Hammer Company. He works for the Bushnell Municipal Electric Company and he has invited me and my traveling partner to come down there on a field trip so that will be upcoming it's about a hundred miles from my house, but they've got uh, a uh, municipal power plant with all of these different engines shown here. And hopefully he'll run one of these. They are not online all the time. It's used for uh, peak performance and uh, when they have outages and they buy their, their power from, I think, Ameron right now. But it's going to be most interesting to see those old engines. So watch for that. And uh, thank you, Craig, for that invitation. And I'll talk much more about that later on. I got a lot more to show you, so do not uh, turn this off. Craig also sent me a copy of this uh, Vaughn Hammer catalog. It's an older one, but they have a complete line of striking tools. So uh, it's, it's interesting to look through there. And I have an open invitation from Dan Chambers to tour the factory so look for that in the upcoming video and he did say I could take videos in there so I might get some video clips to show you on that field trip and I hope to combine that with the powerhouse uh, now Bushnell Illinois is also famous for the kitchen cooked potato chips which are by, by far my favorite and the best they take like taste like the ones I had when I was a little kid. Uh, so much better than the overly salty Lay's, but I usually get these in the red package. So watch for those if you're from the Midwest. Tony Perillo out of Texas sent me some of these little handy uh, notepads. You know, not too many places uh, give away, well, any kind of giveaway anymore, but those will be handy to carry in my pocket when I'm traveling. So uh, I got the same day as the hammers, another huge heavy package from Ed Young and uh, let me show you the things that were in that package and it, it was extremely well uh, packed but in there is one of these Simpson meters now the old analog type and he had heard me talking about uh, or lamenting that you couldn't get the uh, analog type anymore and I showed a whole drawer of my digital uh, meters but and these were not included. I had those in stock. But I, I love these meters. Uh, I have seen a big display up in Wisconsin at Lake de Flambeau where they uh, manufacture some of these. This one was made in Elgin. And uh, I was the only one looking at that display. But they used to make ammeters for uh, automobiles and, and a lot of different products. But now I'm sure it's all digital. And at one time, and maybe it still is, it was owned by an Indian tribe up there, but these are really quality instruments. Let me show you another feature on this. Thank you Ed Young for this meter and the other things and he uh, said that he bought a bunch of these at a sale but what's unique about this Simpson meter is first of all it must not be all that old because this is all kinds of warning here and they sure didn't do that years ago but what I like is that it uses a standard D cell and a 9 volt battery whereas the old ones that I had used some hermaphrodite batteries that uh, and when you'd open these they would be uh, leaking and the whole meter destroyed so I've thrown away several meters destroyed by the batteries so uh, that's nice and I'm not going to keep the batteries in there because I use these so infrequently that I hate to take the chance of even these leak proof batteries uh, damaging the instrument but uh, 
That is nice. Ed knows I like to read, so he also sent along a copy of this uh, Tesla book. So that's going to make good winter reading. And uh, I'm not really familiar with this, but it's a, a book about fracking. And we certainly supply a lot of the fracking sand uh, that is mined within 15 miles of my house. And I see the trains going by all the time with it. So that might make good reading as well. That's also from Ed. Now just one more thing, so hang on. Ed also sent me a 100-foot Stanley tape in good condition, a couple tool catalogs, and a copy of this. I already subscribed to this, and it's one of the finest magazines there is. Every article in there worth reading if you don't already get that. And here's a nice find. I've been wanting one of these for a long time, and it has all of the, uh, the tap drill sizes and... Uh, cutting speeds and all of that in here and it's, it's printed on very heavy paper by uh, Cleveland. You won't find those anymore or if they don't give them away anymore I should say. And then interestingly enough here there's a couple of manuals that he uh, came across too and this one is for the um, Allison well, it's, yeah, Allison, General Motors, that's marked 1959, and I think that's for the propellers on a, on an engine, aircraft engine, of course, and then in this one, this is the parts catalog for the twin WASP uh, Pratt & Whitney engines, and this is dated, yeah, I can't find it right now, but this is pretty neat, all of the pictures and just in case I ever have to repair a wasp engine but what I wanted to show you on the yeah the very last page do you recall in one of my other videos where I showed this as a what is it and I didn't know it at the, the time either but a few people did identify it but there it is and somebody had even made notes alongside of this to be used uh, in some disassembly operation. So that's good stuff too. Thank you Ed. And last but not least a package came from the Stanley Dyer down in Springfield, Missouri which is the home of Grizzly Tools and uh, Bass Pro Shop. That's where their main store is. But anyway you've seen me talk about uh, drilling cross holes and the difficulty of doing that and I've shown this Heinrich jig which cost about 500 bucks. Nobody can afford one of those. But uh, what Stan sent was this little jig that he made and he's got it set up for three different hole sizes but you could make one in any size you want and there's a V there and you simply straddle your work, in this case it's a piece of quarter inch stock, determine where you're going to drill the cross hole and you would lay the little jig on there as such. Now you'd have to make sure that you get it level and now if you push real hard you see and it's going to more or less capture your work so I would tighten the vise and then I would look at it this way and tap it one way or another so that it's uh, again parallel with the table and I'm ready to drill a hole in this case eighth inch and if that is made accurately by Stan and I'm sure it is that would give us a perfectly centered cross hole so that's pretty awesome and anyone can build one of those probably even without uh, blueprints thanks Stan and that concludes this episode of uh, this and that. Thanks for watching. This is Tubal Kane saying so long for now.